In this video, I'll be sharing tips on how to begin using Adobe Illustrator to create vector artwork. For exploration into Illustrator for laser cutting, we have further videos shared on the Craft Hub platform. I am working within the Surface Pattern and Textiles department at Swansea College of Art, utilising their range of specialised equipment across their studio for digital design. Part of the Adobe Creative Suite, Illustrator is a software that uses vectors. There are other vector drawing based softwares, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be showing you Illustrator. What makes it different from other softwares like Photoshop is its use of vectors. A vector image is made up of mathematical lines and curves, in contrast to Photoshop's use of raster image, which is made up of a grid of pixels. We can see the difference between the two when we look at these two images. On the right, I have a raster image and on the left is our vector. As we zoom in, we can see our raster image gets blurry and pixelated around the edges, whereas our vector stays really clean and smooth on the edges. The key benefit of using Illustrator is that our vectors can be scaled up and down indefinitely without losing any of that quality that raster images do and its mathematical accuracy lends it really nicely if we want to make things that are very um, accurate and aligned. Opening Illustrator, we'll need to create a workspace to start working. So we do that by going up here to New File and it'll open up a menu with options for us. It can be helpful to set our workspace to the same size as the work we'll be working on to. Um, or Illustrator also provides you with some handy options here in the top so it'll give you options for different size workspaces in different mediums. What we can also do is come over here to the right and input exactly the right size that we'd like. So we can change our width, height, orientation and our unit. So what I'll be doing is making an A4 sheet workspace for this uh, tutorial, which will be 29.7 centimetres by 21 and I'm going to keep it landscape. And then when we're happy, we go down here to create and it'll open our workspace for us. So that we all start so that we all start with the same visuals, we're going to go up to Window, Workspace, and choose Essentials Classic. These will all change the way our workspace looks with different tools on the side and different options. But Essentials Classic gives us a really nice starting point with everything we need. Illustrator has lots of different tools. And for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to be focusing on a select few from our options. There are endless opportunities and tools to use within Illustrator, but we're going to be focusing on a select few to get a really good understanding of those. Navigating, navigating around our workspace, over here on the left we have our tools bar, which has a list of all the different tools we can use. If we hover over a tool, it gives us a description and its keyboard shortcut. So we won't be using shortcuts in this tutorial but you can use them as you get more used to Illustrator to speed up your workflow. We can also get variants of the same tools if we have this little white corner and if we click and hold it'll give us a variant option of that tool. Up here at the top we have our control panel so here we can change things like our fill, our stroke and our stroke weight and over here on the right we have our properties and some other handy tools listed here. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be exploring the pen tool, which is found here, the shape tool, which is found here, and our selection tools, which are the selection tool and our direct selection tool. Tips for navigating. Quick tips for navigating around the artboard. If we want to move our artboard around, we can use our hand tool over here to click, hold and drag our artboard around to see different areas. And if we want to zoom in and out, we have the zoom tool here to click, drag, to zoom in and zoom out. The shape tool, we can the shape tool, we can find this over here. Clicking and holding, we can go to the rectangle tool, which I'm going to use first. There's different options here. And to make a shape, we're going to click anywhere on our workspace, click, hold, and drag to make our shape. And that's going to hold on until we decide that's the shape I want. And when we let go, it will make our shape. If I wanted to make a rectangle that's perfectly square. I can hold shift on my keyboard whilst I click and drag and that will make me a perfect square. And if I wanted a rectangle that is exactly a specific size, I can just click once on my workspace and it will bring up this menu 
and I'm going to make mine five centimeters by five centimeters and that will make me a perfect square. If I need to move my shape around, we can move it by using this small blue dot in the center, clicking, holding and dragging to move it around. All of the shape tool options work in the same way as we can see with the ellipses. Now that we have our shapes made, we can work on manipulating them. And we do this by using our selection tool found here. Using the selection tool, we can move, rotate and scale our shapes up and down. If we'd like to move them, we can select the shape and use the white dot to move them around by clicking, holding and dragging. If we'd like to rotate our shape, we can hover on the, over the corner of our shape here until these two arrows come up and then click, hold and drag to rotate. And if we'd like to scale them up or down to change the dimensions, we can use these white boxes on the corners, which are our anchor points to change the size. Also able to change, we're also able to change the physical appearance of the shape by editing the outlines. So we can change the thickness of the stroke on the outline of our shape by changing that here. We can make it thicker or we can make it very thin. Another way we can change them is by changing the fill and stroke colors. So to change the fill, we go up here to the fill option and select a color and that will fill inside our shape with color. To change the outline color, we'll select our shape and then go to the stroke option and then select our color or our stroke. Back to the basics. Back to the basics. We can further manipulate our shapes by using the direct selection tool found here. How our illustrator shapes work is that they work on paths and at the end of paths there will be anchors shown by this white box. And we can click, drag and move these anchors to create more complex shapes. We can also click on our anchors and it will bring up this small curvature tool. By clicking, holding, dragging and moving this, we can create curved edges where they were pointy edges before. It works slightly differently on curved shapes. So if we select our anchor tool on our ellipse, it brings up these handles. And by clicking, holding and moving these, we can change the curve of our shape and that path. We can move our anchor around as normal to create new complex shapes alongside moving the handles. To make, more complex, to make more complex shapes, we can do this by using our pen tool found here. The pen tool is a really versatile tool, which is different than pen tools you might find in other programs, as it works on our anchors, paths and our handles then to control our curves. So to use our pen tool, we're going to click to start on our canvas to create an anchor point. And what I'll get is a trailing path that comes off that, which is going to show me where my new line is going to be. So if I click again, I've made that line and I can keep going to make my shape, clicking on my artboard, moving around and then coming back to my initial anchor to close my shape. And similar to how we've done in with our other shapes, we can use our direct selection tools to move around our anchor points to change our shape more. I want to slightly change it, move some parts around. And we can use our selection tool to move it around, rescale it up and down, rotate it as we see fit. If we wanted something with curved lines, we can use our pen tool again, but in a slightly different way. So we'll click to start again. But instead of just clicking where we want our anchor points to be, we're going to click and hold and drag to create those curves with those handles. And what I'm doing is I'm manipulating and making the path curved as I go. So I'm going to let go to make that curve. And then again, click, hold, drag to make that new curve. And just keep going like that until I finish making my shape. and then coming back and closing my shape off. And then similar again, we can use our direct selection tool to adjust these, adjust that curve. If it's not quite right, I can be experimental and move things around as I see fit until I'm happy with my shape. 
we can change the fill and color and stroke of these similar to everything else we've done by using the options up here. If I wanted to make a shape that's completely one color. Or I can change my stroke thickness and make something that has an outline. The pen tool is a really versatile tool, which will be, it's quite intuitive and you'll get more used to it the more you play around and be playful and experimental with it and to get different results. Putting all these skills into practice, we can now start with the exciting process of experimenting with the tools, learning their limits and creating through play. You can see how I start to change the shapes and manipulate them by using all the basic tools and skills we learned earlier in the video. Just by moving around anchor points and changing curves, we can create new, entirely new creative complex shapes from basic beginnings and using the basic shape tool. We can take this a step further by introducing the curve tool into our workflow. It's very similar to the pen tool, but we can add in new anchor points along our paths that will allow us to add curves. So by adding in a few points, I have more points to manipulate with my direct selection tool, which I can bring down and create more complex shapes. So now we can see all the shapes that we can make just from some, from some basic shape tool start. And I'll next be showing you how we can take these and put them into practice and create artwork with them. You can see that I've combined these shapes together in interesting patterns, reflecting and adjusting them to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. I can move them around to change the composition to something I'm really happy with and make them fit together perfectly due to the nature of starting with squares. So once I'm happy with everything, it's all outlines, and then I can start to think about how I might change the strokes, give it a background, add in colour, and keep developing upon it to make a completed artwork. You can see here how I've selected a colour palette for my artwork. So I've got all different shades and tones of these bluey greys, and I've eye dropped them out and added in the colour to my shapes. This one might be nice in this colour. And a handy tool for this is the eyedropper. So we can just pick a colour and immediately change it after selecting our shape. I might also change the background to remove the stroke and give it a flat colour. So I'm going to colour it this colour. And I can play around with these shapes and colours until I'm happy and I've got something really, really interesting, which started as just basic square shape tool shapes.